dear students you shall actually know about the composition of the glass and the types of glass in this module as glass is one of the most important physical evidences involved in crime Now the knowledge about the glass and its composition play a very important role in the field of forensics. The reason being that it makes the examination of the glass which has been broken or been used in committing a crime. And this investigation becomes very easier if we know the make of the glass. Now the material of the glass is going to reveal its make. and thus it's going to help us in the investigations the main ingredient in manufacturing the glass is the silica along with some minor ingredients like metal oxides or some type of color additives to give color to the glass now depending upon the composition of the minor ingredients glass are can be divided into different categories like a lead glass a borosilicate glass a soda lime glass or an aluminosilicate glass etc now by definition glass is an amorphous hard brittle substance which is usually transparent but translucent and also opaque at times it is formed by the fusion of one or more oxides like that of silica borax oxide phosphoric oxide and some metallic oxide followed by rapid cooling of the fused material to prevent crystallization of the components involved in other words glass can be considered as a super cooled liquid of extremely high viscosity let us now discuss about various ingredients that are used for making glass the following are some ingredients used in the manufacture of glass along with some additives required for specific properties number 1 sand or silica silica is the main ingredient for glass making with a very high melting point of around 2000 degrees celsius this is the major reason why it is possible to make products like halogen lamps from just silica itself it's mainly obtained from the pure sands of peringaringa harbor of north cape it is washed and shifted to remove shells stones before mixing number 2 sodium carbonate or soda ash sodium carbonate is added to make the process of glass manufacturing more efficient as it reduces the melting point of silica to around 1000 degrees celsius it was earlier found in the ash of some plants but is now produced from the table salt itself but the sodium carbonate tends to make the finished glass water soluble which is not desirable in glass making its main source is from usa number 3 lime or calcium oxide calcium oxide is extracted from limestone it is added to counter the effect of sodium carbonate and makes the glass non soluble in water its main source is vitomo number 4 metallic oxide aluminum oxide and magnesium oxide are added to further enhance the properties of glass number 5 other additives a number of different other ingredients are added in order to change the properties of the finished glass as per the requirement some examples are lead lead is added to make crystal glasses because of its good reflective properties the glass thus formed appears to sparkle which is used for forming decorative patterns on the ordinary glass number 2 boron the addition of boron changes the thermal and electrical properties 
of the glass and is thus used to make pyrex glassware that can withstand extreme temperatures number 3 lanthanum oxide with its excellent light reflective properties it is used to make high quality lenses in glasses earlier thorium oxide was used but due to its radioactive properties it is not longer used number 4 iron it is used to absorb infrared energy in the heat absorbing filters installed in the movie projectors number 6 color additives color to the glass can be done either by glass oxidation or by introducing a large variety of additives it is actually difficult to make a clear glass metals and oxides are also used to give color to glass glass oxidation is promoted by the addition of carbon while the degree of oxidation is measured on an arbitrary scale known as carbon number for example clear glass has carbon number 0 dark green glass has carbon number 28 various additives and the colors they give now iron oxide gives blue green color whereas iron oxide and chromium gives richer green color sulfur carbon and iron salts gives out amber and yellow color along with it manganese gives purple color selenium gives out red or pink color cobalt gives out blue color tin oxide antimony and arsenic when mixed as an additive gives out white opaque color copper oxide on the other hand produces turquoise color nickel along with cobalt gives blue color types of glasses depending upon the chemical composition all commercial glasses are divided into six basic categories number 1 soda line glass it is the most common and cheapest form of glass it is used for manufacturing window glass bottles containers light bulbs bangles ophthalmic lenses car headlamps etc the common oxides found in it are sodium calcium magnesium and aluminium it is not highly resistant to high temperature and sudden changes of temperature while the resistance to corrosive chemicals is fair the composition is as follows silica has 60 to 70% soda is present in 12 to 18% whereas lime is present in 5 to 10% number 2 is lead glass this type of glass has fairly high percentage of lead oxide it is quite soft and because of its high refractive index it gives brilliance to the glass as a result it is used to make decorative glassware neon sign tubes thermometer tubes for the absorption of x rays and other radiations its excellent electrical insulating property makes it favorable for electrical applications this glass is more expensive than soda lime it cannot withstand high temperature and sudden temperature changes as has got low melting point the composition is as follows silica is present from 54% to 65% lead oxide is 18% to 38% soda or potash is present in 13 to 15% number third is borosilicate glass this type of glass has got substantial amount of boric oxide which makes it resistant to heat acid corrosion and alkalis they are not as easily fabricated as soda lime or lead glass and are hard as they have lower coefficient of expansion hence can be used at high temperature
These glasses are used for making lab glassware, domestic ovenware in industry for gauge glasses, pipelines, photochromic glasses, sealed beam headlights, etc. The composition is as follows. Silica is present in 70 to 80% amount. Boric oxide is 7 to 13%. Alkali is 4% to 8%. Aluminium oxide is present in 2% to 7% amount. Aluminosilicate glass. This type of glass has got aluminium oxide added to it although it is similar to borosilicate glass but is harder to fabricate and has got greater chemical durability it can withstand very high temperature as its melting point is almost 1000 degrees celsius it can be used as resistors for electronic circuits the composition is as follows silica 67% aluminium oxide 17% calcium oxide 8% magnesium oxide 7% 96% silica glass it is a type of borosilicate glass from which all the non silicate elements have been removed this glass is resistant to temperature up to 900 degrees celsius Fused silica glass. It is a glass which is pure silicon dioxide in a non crystalline state. It is very difficult to fabricate and is the most expensive of all types. It can sustain temperatures up to 1200 degrees Celsius. Various methods of examination are used for unveiling of the true identity of a glass. The forensic examination of a glass may be undertaken in two steps one is the physical comparison of suspected and controlled glass fragments for their identity and source correspondence and secondly the examination of fractures on broken glass fragments and their reconstruction for determining the direction angle and sequence of impact of projectile let us take physical comparison as the primary examination by appearance it could be transparent milky ground colored flat curved patterned or polished now let us see type of glasses ordinary pyrex borosilicate laminated tempered toughened wired glass window pane glassware automobile glass headlight and optical glass etc then comes physical measurement this include mainly two parameters namely the thickness and curvature of glass pieces under comparison it is observed that the thickness of glass sheet vary significantly from one place to the other and do not have uniform thickness throughout therefore it is very much desirable to obtain larger pieces of at least the control glass samples and study the variations in their thickness before comparing the thickness of the control sample with that of the crime exhibit first comes edge thickness a micrometer is used to measure accurately the edge thickness of a glass fragment readings should be taken all around the broken edges to find out at which point the crime exhibits matches with any portion of the broken glass this will further help during the matching of surface patterns and other identifying characteristics along the broken edges then comes curvature a spherometer is used to measure the radius of curvature of the glass fragments having curved surface the radius of curvature of the fragment is calculated using the formula the formula is r is equal to l square by 6 h plus h by 2 where l means the mean distance between the legs of spherometer and h stand for height of curved surface another method of examination would be fluorescence under uv radiation some types of glass fluorescence under ultraviolet radiation with different colors which may be brown violet purple blue or green etc this examination has to be conducted in a dark room and the glass pieces are to be exposed 
to UV radiation should be of similar size and thickness and they are to be thoroughly washed with acetone or any other suitable solvent to remove any grease or dirt. When there is a clear difference in the fluorescence of the two glasses, it indicates different source of their origin. On the other hand, the similarity in fluorescence by itself cannot be conclusive proof of source correspondence and further tests are to be conducted to arrive at the possible commonness of the origin. Fourth technique would be physical matching. This is the most conclusive proof of source correspondence. Since no two fractures will ever be identical over any appreciable length, a complementary lateral fit along the broken edges over the length of quarter inch or more establishes that the two glass fragments were continuous before breakage. By naked eye or under a microscope, we should search carefully the edges of the samples which will exactly fit into each other, taking into consideration the factors contributing to the matching such as general appearance, color, edge thickness, shape of breakage, all the irregularities and styrations near the broken surfaces. Lateral pressure has to be applied in order to see that the small irregularities intermesh and hold the pieces together so that we can feel the sense of exact fit along the broken edges. This is especially important for matching of smaller fragments. In case of non-continuous glass fragments, source correspondence is attempted by matching the invisible glass ream patterns, manufacturing marks, polish marks, styration on the surface of the glass fragments, Proper illumination are to be used such as point light source, diffuse light, transmitted light, incident or oblique light in order to obtain the exact patterns for comparison. A comparison microscope with lower magnification could be used for matching these patterns. While glass pieces of the size of about 1 square centimeter should be sufficient for such comparisons, larger pieces increase the probability of source correspondence. In general, the majority of glass evidence presented for forensic comparison is either too fragmentary or too minute. To permit comparison of this type, hence the physical properties of density and refractive index are used most successfully for characterizing glass particles. The characterizing properties of a glass depend not only on the constituent element but also on the manner in which the glass has been treated during manufacture. Glass of similar composition possesses different properties depending upon the mechanical and heat treatments which they have received. It is for this reason that considerable importance is attached to physical properties of density and refractive index as a mean of comparing glass samples. These two fundamental parameters, though class characteristic in nature, provide sufficient data to the analyst to exclude glass fragments that originate from different sources. Apart from all these ways of examination, one very commonly used method is density or specific gradient. Glass from various sources such as window panes, automobile, headlights, bottles and plate glass doors all may have slightly different densities. The densities of various glass and related materials are given below. Window glass or flat have 2.47 to 2.56 density. Headlight glass has 2.47 to 2.63. Mica has 2.6 to 3.2. Quartz, on other hand, is 2.65. Glass and flint have 2.9 to 5.9. Diamond comprises of 3.01 to 3.52 density. Another method used is density comparison by flotation. For the heavier liquid, methylene iodide or bromoform can be used. For the lighter liquid, xylene, bromobenzene, nitrobenzene, benzene or kerosene can be used. For this method, bromoform of density 2.89 and bromobenzene of density 1.52 are selected. The crime and control glass pieces 
samples are to be crushed so that it becomes of comparable sizes with similar shape. Each piece of glass is briefly sketched and marked for reference to return it to its original packet after the examination. A clean and dried sample of crime glass particle is placed in a small beaker containing bromoform. The glass will float on the liquid surface. This indicates that the density of the liquid is greater than that of the glass. Then slowly add the less denser liquid, bromobenzene, dropwise with stirring until the particle is exactly suspended. If the addition of bromobenzene is in excess, which is indicated by the sinking of the glass particle, then bromoform is added until the glass chip remains suspended in the liquid medium. Care is taken to see that the mixture is stirred with each addition and the, the air bubbles, if any, are removed. Now add similar size, clean and dry sample of control glass. If both the crime and the control glass particles remain suspended in the liquid, then their densities are equal to each other and to that of the liquid mixture. Particles of different densities will either sink or float depending on whether they are more dense or less dense than the liquid medium. The density value of the particles of glass can be determined by calculating the density or specific gravity of the flotation mixture using specific gravity bottle or a pycnometer. In this module, we have actually studied glass and its Let various summarize which what are we involved have in learned making a glass in this module. The various color additives which actually give color to the glass and basically the color is being given to the clear glass and we have also started that although the glass may be a clear glass but it has got a tinge of green color. Now this is important in actually recognizing the glass sample involved in the crime. Now the material of the glass is going to reveal its make. And once make is revealed, it helps in reaching the suspect and hence the investigation can be done partially if not completely. We have also studied the various types of classes which are categorized according to their composition.